be reaching thousands, but we're making a dent, we're making a mark. But everybody's not going to do everything. Amen? So maintain the property. That's a ministry. So minister in the prisons and the jails and other places, the dark places of our, our society, taking the light of God into the darkness. That brings glory to Him. The interesting thing is that every person in this room is in one of these two camps. You either have the library of Christ or you don't. And the Holy Spirit will let you know which one. Love sums up and fulfills all the commandments. Think about it. Love for God. We have no other gods. We have no idols. We, we hold His name as sacred. And even the, His day that He rested is sacred. Love for others. We love our parents. We don't murder people. That's one way to show them that you love them. Right? And in some cases, that really is a good way to show people that you love them. <laughs> you know, I really want to murder you right now, but I love you, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but if we love others, there's no adultery. We love our spouse too much. We love the Lord too much. There's no theft. I'm not going to take something that belongs to somebody else because it's not mine and it's going to hurt them if I do that. And I love them too much to do that. There's no false testimony. You're not going to say things that aren't true about other people if you love them. And you're not, you know, probably just a good thing. Just don't say things about other people. That way you don't have to worry about whether or not it's true. Talk to the Lord. Don't talk to other people. Talk to the Lord. He knows the truth. And lastly, no coveting. Coveting is wanting something that somebody else has so badly that you wish they would lose it so you can have it. It's one step short of theft. Coveting, I might say, is to theft what, uh, what's that word? Uh, when you look at another person and lust. That's it. What lust is to adultery. Coveting is to it's a gateway drug, you might say. Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And that's what he did by giving, it, giving us his love, showing us his love, requiring us to love one another. And I've got more on that, but I'm going to skip over it. Let me just close with these last three thoughts. One half thing, see? <laughs> Handwritten, so it won't take so long. One is that the Holy Spirit is the one who dispenses this love into our hearts. In fact, he dispenses it when he comes into our hearts. And that love that he brings is what enables us to obey the, the, the great commandments. Ten commandments and Jesus' great commandment. He is the seal, the badge, the library, the uniform of the retainers of Christ. It is the Spirit of God who is love. Who fills us with love. So that we can demonstrate that love. So that others may be drawn to that love. And the one who enables us to love. It is his presence in us that is the love of God. That enables us to obey Christ's command. And if you look at Galatians 5.22 quickly. The fruit of the spirit is love. Joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness. Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Sound familiar? Yep. It ought to. It's written by the same guy. <laughs> and those who belong to Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep step with the Spirit. Let us not become the things that love doesn't do. Conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. You notice the pattern? You know, it's February. It's a season of love. You know, every season should be a season of love. Love, love shouldn't have a season. It's like Christmas. It should be with us all the time. It should be part and parcel of who we are, personally and collectively. And to the greater extent that we demonstrate that, 
so will our attraction for the world to God grow. The more we grow in love, the more our attractiveness to the world for God's purpose will grow. We want to grow, don't we? We want more people to come into this place. We'd like to have all the pews as full as these four or five pews on each side are full, right? How do we do that? Let your light so shine before me that they will see your good deeds, your, your love for one another, your patience with one another. Lord, I know you're patient with me, and you need to be, because I have a long way to go. But let, let your love be evident to all. I think it's another exhortation of Paul, maybe John. Let the, the love of Christ in you be evident to everyone. Let them see that badge. Let them say, you know what? That person really loves her, their church. They really love their fellow believers there at that church. I'd like to be part of that kind of church. That thinks and hopes and believes the best in one another. And encourages one another. And doesn't boast about how important they are. That's the kind of church I want to be. I think that's the kind of church God wants us to be. I think so, because he, he kind of, well, I didn't suggest it, he commanded it. Stand with me. <clears throat> Jesus, you commanded this, so we are counting on you to make us able to fulfill it. Help us to love one another the way you love us and gave yourself for us. The way you love the church and gave yourself for the church. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Go and love one another.